Coming up on First at Four, a man serving prison time in connection to the death of a Scott County teenager tells the parole board he does not deserve to get out. And the Foundation for Appalachian Kentucky is changing leadership. We'll tell you who the next CEO will be. Plus, the forecast turns a little bit wintry as we end the work week. Those details coming up as Mountain News First at Four starts now. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News First at Four. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Huntsley. First at four, a man convicted of killing a pregnant Scott County teenager says he does not want parole. Roger Macbeth told the parole board he was not interested in parole, saying he knows he doesn't deserve it. He's been incarcerated for nearly 20 years for the death of his ex-girlfriend, Ashley Lyons. Lyons was 18 years old and five months pregnant when she f was found shot to death in her car. I'm not here to convince y'all to give me bro. I know I don't deserve it. But I do want to use this time to say that I'm truly sorry for what I did. That I want to tell Ashley's family that I am truly sorry for what I did. There's not a day that goes by that I don't think about it. After Macbeth's original trial, the Supreme Court ruled prosecutors used illegally obtained evidence and overturned the verdict. Three years later, Macbeth took a plea deal for a lesser charge. A judge sentenced him to 42 years. Today was his first time up for parole. House Bill 63 requires all Kentucky schools to have at least one school resource officer. It's now been more than one year since the deadline put in place by the legislature for schools to hire SROs, yet more than 40% of schools don't have one. Districts unable to fill their open SRO positions were required to submit their reasons why to the state. Many say lack of applicants and funding were among the issues. Finding applicants has been tough and then being able to afford, you know, five for each school when we have a lot of other needs as well and safety is important but funding is an issue. Some school leaders believe the state should fund SROs through new legislation. In the meantime, many districts continue to struggle to find that funding on their own. We'll have more on the school resource officer shortage tonight at 6. The Foundation for Appalachian Kentucky is undergoing a leadership change. Chief Operating Officer Kristen Collins, who has been with the Foundation since 2015, will take over as the Chief Executive Officer. Founder and longtime CEO Jerry Roll had been leading the Foundation for more than a decade. Roll says the nonprofit launched in 2009 when she and others wanted the region to have a foundation dedicated to Eastern Kentucky. We knew that there were lots of people that live here and that don't live here but love it here and love this place that have time to contribute, that have gifts, that have money and resources. Roll says she's most proud of being a channel for more money to enter the region. The founder says the foundation's board went through a thoughtful process to select Collins. We'll have more on their transition tonight at 6. We are tracking some drier and cooler conditions across the mountains on this Wednesday afternoon. Let's take a live look in southwest Virginia at UVA wise. That current temperature not bad for late December, currently sitting at 52 degrees as we see a few peaks of sunshine back in the distance as well. And up on the radar, we are drier today, all thanks to a little bit of some drier air pushing into the mountains at this hour. Also under a mix of sun and clouds. Those current temperatures are not too bad for late December. Most of us in the middle to upper 40s up to 46 in Jackson, also Pikeville, 48 for London and 52 for Irvin, also Williamsburg. So we are cooler on this Wednesday but still not too bad as we go into this evening. However, we are tracking some big changes as we go into your Friday, all thanks to this strong upper level low that is spinning over Missouri, producing some wintry mix and some snow showers close to St. Louis. And that moisture and that cooler air is pushing into our region as we go into your Friday, watching out for high temperatures back in the 30s and maybe a few snow showers as we end the work week. Also kick off the weekend, timing out those changes in just a few minutes. Steve. 
Cameron, thank you. The New York Times is suing OpenAI and Microsoft for copyright infringement. The complaint was filed today. In it, officials with the Times say the company's artificial intelligence technology illegally copied millions of the news organization's articles to train ChatGPT to provide people with information. As a result, officials with the Times say the technology is now competing with their own company. After years of debate, a Confederate monument in Florida was removed today. Charles B. Garrison, the chair for the city of Jacksonville's Planning Commission, posted on X, formerly known as Twitter, that Mayor Donna Deegan ordered the removal of the monument to honor our present and build a future where every member of our community feels seen and respected. Crews started working on the monument at about 4.30 this morning. The Michigan Supreme Court has rejected an attempt to remove former President Donald Trump from the 2024 ballot. The rejected argument was based on the U.S. Constitution's 14th Amendment ban on insurrectionists. The ruling is at odds with another recent ruling from the Colorado Supreme Court, which took Trump off its primary ballot due to his role in the January 6th Capitol riot. The next step for both of these decisions will likely be appeals to the U.S. Supreme Court. Justice Department prosecutors are trying to stop former President Trump from reportedly sowing disinformation in his criminal election subversion trial. In a new filing today, prosecutors asked the court to implement parameters around Trump using claims of political persecution in his defense. Prosecutors say Trump will likely try to politicize the trial to convince jurors to ignore the facts and legal standards of the case. Coming up on First at Four, a pregnant 18-year-old and her boyfriend were last heard from on Friday. Yesterday, officials say they were found dead. What police have confirmed about the case. And a chilly end to 2023 is on the way. Your first alert forecast after this break.